Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to the worship of God here at Westminster. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. If you have a prayer request, uh, we invite you to fill out a prayer request card. Those will be collected during the singing of our first hymn. If you're worshiping online with us this morning, we ask that you make a note on Facebook and those prayer requests will be included later in the service. Today at 3 o'clock in our front yard, we will be installing uh, Pastor Molly Morris as associate pastor here at Westminster. We invite you to that special service and uh, we have chairs, but if you have one that's really comfortable, you can bring that one. So that's at three o'clock today. There's information in your bulletin about how to contribute to the Pentecost offering. This is a regular offering taken by the PCUSA uh, to work with uh, children and youth in our denomination. 40% of the offering stays here for use in our community for those things we feel important. All right. Please rise for the call to worship. Did I mention we're singing today? Okay. The day of Pentecost is here. The day of Pentecost is here. The day of Pentecost is here. The day of the day of Pentecost is here. may be seated. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, 
we dare with confidence to approach God with our prayers of confession. Let us unite in the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. God of amazing love and unexpected grace, open our eyes that we may see you, especially in those times when we feel abandoned by you. Forgive us that we so easily allow circumstance to blind us to your presence. Touch our lives that we may know you, especially in those times when we feel unable to cope. Forgive us that we too frequently mistrust your power. Fill our hearts that we may become like you, especially when your message needs to be heard. Forgive us that we forget who we are, children of God with your spirit in us. And all God's people say, In the waters of baptism, we experience God's forgiveness. As we remember that forgiveness this day, may we all trust in the promise of the gospel that we are forgiven, that we are redeemed, that we belong to God. As a forgiven people, remember what the scriptures teach us, that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus. 
Um, and if Freya would like to come up, she may, or we can do that. We also have a red light on my mic pack, so if there are batteries that could run up at the same time, that would be great <laughs> while we do this children's message. <laughs> and she's coming. We finally have children running up our aisles again. <laughs> I'm going to come down here. Hi, Miss Freya. So today is Pentecost. And Pentecost is a very important day in the life of the church because it's kind of like the church's birthday. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came in and united everybody in the Christian church. And so I want to show you some things that are on my stole today. I'm going to show everyone. This is my ordination stole. It was put together by lots and lots of friends. And what I did is I had fabric sent to so many people in my life, all the people who had been a part of raising me in the church and guiding me to become a pastor, and they all put little messages on their hands. And so down here I have, what are these? These are buttons. I have these buttons from a pastor out in Texas, and these buttons belong to Presbyterian women in the 18 and 1900s. And so that's a very old piece. And then right here, is a hand from an elder at my church. <laughs> it's okay, it's hard to listen to. And this is, a, this, this is a little church. My home church is right here. And this hand right here is Pastor Blake and Susan Richter's hands, and they put a picture of the Annunciation on their hand. And over here, we have Miss Tracy's hand, and she wrote a very pretty message for me. And there are hands of two-year-olds on here, and there are hands of 102-year-olds on my stole. And I think it is just such a beautiful thing of the church, that we are a church that helps each other and guides each other and teaches each other, and we all are brought together because of God. So let's say a prayer for coming all together, and then we'll be done. Holy God, thank you for making us a church full of relationships. There are people to help raise each of us and guide each of us and teach each of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right. And we have them bouncing down too. Let us pray the prayer of illumination in unison. Our 
Our scripture from this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Listen now for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the land in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthen- Parthenians, Mides, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Phamalia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Holy and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. When I was in middle school, I attended a conference. Massanetta Springs held an annual middle school conference. And the year I went, this Pentecost text from Acts was used as the theme verse. And I went to a lot of conferences growing up, but none instilled a text quite like this one. Each of these four days, We spent diving deeper into the text, dissecting it down to the smallest parts. The theme of the camp that year was ignited, like the tongues of fire that were on top of the heads of the disciples. Even 15 years later, I can still hear pieces of the theme song in my head. It started to be ignited in the love of God. And then a little bit later down the line, you get the line, just as God first reached out to us. I wish I could pull back the rest of that song, but I guess if you sing the same song twice a day for several days, even 15 years later, you'll still get a little piece of it. This conference was the first experience I had with the church outside of my own local congregation. And perhaps this is why it was etched into my memory. The first time I was surrounded by hundreds of people my own age, and led by people passionate about sharing God's love. I saw how enthusiastic the church could be. If you've never seen hundreds of teenagers put aside their desire to be cool in order to do choreographed dances to 80s and 90s music, I think you're missing out. It's a good time. It was also the first time I saw just how relational the church is. These types of conferences and camps connected me 
to countless people from across the country. And this is something that I love about the church. I've heard it said many times that the Presbyterian church is a small world. And I can imagine that this is true in many denominations, but in the Peace USA, it's hard to meet another pastor that you're not somehow connected to. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody else. I have yet to meet a complete stranger at any Presbyterian event. Oftentimes, these type of events, these camps and these conferences, where hundreds are gathered are where I feel most connected to the spirit. Some say it's because of a concept called a thin place, a place in the world where our physical world and the spiritual world just get a little closer together. But what if it's not just the place, but it's the gathering of people? The day of Pentecost is celebrated because there was a gathering of people. Jews from every nation were in Jerusalem. Jewish people who were born Jewish, Jewish people who had converted, they were gathering in Jerusalem to celebrate the Festival of Weeks, to mark the day of, the, uh, of God giving the Torah to God's people. They came to give their offerings to the temple, and they spoke a multitude of languages, and yet when the Spirit of God rested on their head, in flaming tongues, they were able to speak in languages that everyone could understand. They spoke in their native languages, and yet everyone around them heard what they were saying. For some reason, the first inclination of hearing this cacophony of voices was to claim everyone was drunk. And I don't know about you, but I've yet to find a drink that makes me speak in languages that I don't actually know. <laughs> Peter is quick to dismiss this explanation, saying, it's only 9 a.m., how is this even possible? Peter had not gone to a football tailgate, clearly. <laughs> but that's okay. The Spirit of God caused this symphony of languages, and Peter reminds those gathered together of the words of the prophet Joel. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. The Spirit of God will be poured out among you. And as Christians, we often recognize today Pentecost as the day the Spirit came into the world. Jesus tells us another is coming after him, one that will never leave. But our scriptures are full of stories of the Spirit of God with us. In the beginning, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters of creation. The Spirit of God was in the burning bush that spoke to Moses and called him to be liberator and leader of the Israelites. The Spirit of God was the still, small voice that spoke to Elijah when he was on the run. John the Baptist said he baptized with water, but Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, the Spirit of God descended upon him as a dove, and God claimed Jesus as God's own. Jesus promised even after he left this earth, we would never be alone. And then one morning during the festival of weeks, from all over the land, Jews had gathered together and the spirit descended upon them through a rushing wind and a flaming tongue. The spirit of God was present in the waters that floated Moses from his mother to the Pharaoh's daughter. The Spirit of God was present in the quail and manna that fell from the sky. The Spirit of God was present in the stone tablets that contained the law. The Spirit of God was present in the messenger who delivered the news to Mary that she carried the Son of God. The Spirit was present when Jesus sat with his disciples, breaking bread and sharing wine. The Spirit of God is present in the living water offered to the woman at the well and to everyone who thirsts. All of this is to say the Spirit of God is everywhere. In all times, in all places, in all people, the Spirit has been found in and of the earth, in the water, in the mighty rushing wind, in the fire, in the smallest of sounds. Today we recognize and celebrate the inbreaking of the Spirit unifying the people. Pentecost marks the day for many as the beginning of the church. Many children's message sing happy birthday to the church. I'm sorry we missed out on that. 
We've been hearing for the last couple of weeks the words of Paul, both in the book of Acts and from the letter to the Galatians. And we've been hearing about the unifying nature of God through Christ, that in Christ we are one. Christ came for all people, Jews and Gentiles. We are a church united, called to be connected and relational. When the Spirit entered into Jerusalem that day in the rushing wind and the flaming tongues, she removed the barrier of language to unite the people together in the work of the kingdom. We often have very special events on this day, as we will later today. Confirmation, ordination, installations, we recognize the importance of the Spirit putting a call on all of our lives. But those events are not just about the calling on one person's life, but the calling to the community and the people that are a part of that community, the relationship they belong to. We do not do the work of ministry alone. I have been called here as your associate pastor, and I do not intend to do this work on my own. You are all a part of the work that we are going to do. We do ministry together because we have been called together to do the work of God, of sharing the gospel meshes, of sharing the love of Christ to all of God's children. When I'm installed this afternoon, it's not a celebration of me. Someone has already told me that today is my day, but this is our day to celebrate together the work that we will be doing as we move forward in partnership. We are all being celebrated because we are all being called by the Spirit. When the people saw the event that happened on Pentecost, the rushing wind, the flaming tongues, when they heard the voices of every nation clearly, they were amazed and perplexed. They knew something miraculous was happening, but they didn't know exactly what it meant. This is the work of the Spirit doing miraculous things and calling us together and forward into an unknown world. We don't know what's going on. We are in a time of uncertainty where will things go back to normal? Will they move forward? But we are united together. We are in it together, ready to do this work that God has called us to. That is the miracle of Pentecost, that we are called forth into a world to share the love of Christ with all we meet and never doing it alone. It's amazing and it's perplexing. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words printed in your bulletin from the brief statement of faith. Please rise, yes, we're standing now. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with the believers in the one body of Christ in church. And Spirit who inspired gospels, rules our faith, and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the water of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women, men, and people to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in the church and culture, to hear voices of people long silence, to work with one another for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, come Lord Jesus, amen.
as we come to our time of prayer, I will invite you to pray at certain points if you feel called to. Our prayer requests today are from Carolyn Anderson, and she requests prayers for our friends and family suffering with health issues. And Teresa Hagenbuch requests prayers for a family member who's having a health challenge. Let us pray. God of wind and flame, blow into our lives. Ignite the fire of hope, fan the flame of possibility. Transform us into a people who share your love with a world in pain, a people who proclaim your hope into a world given to despair, a people who live as though the world can be changed into the kingdom that is to come. God of many languages, you sing the language of joy with us. You join in the dance of life. Hear your children who sing and dance and praise this morning, who celebrate new life with the possibilities of the future, who celebrate relationships, both new and exciting, and the long-term yet still exciting, those whom the wonder of life fills their being to the limit, May they hear your voice joining in the singing and shouting. We lift up our joys to you now. And yet, God, if life, you also speak the language of pain, of sorrow, of fear, and despair. Hear your children who speak who wail, who whisper in these languages this day, who find themselves in hospital beds or waiting anxiously beside those beds, who gather to say farewell to those who are traveling or moving, or those gathering at the graveside to say that longer farewell. Those who worry about where the next meal or the next rent check will come from, for those who live in the place where peace is just a word, a faint hope, a distant dream. May all those whose language is pain, may you hear them lamenting, and may they hear you lamenting with them. We lift up our concerns to you. God of Pentecost, who speaks with many tongues, God who makes God's self known in many ways, fill us with your spirit this and every morning. Hear the prayers we share using many different languages. We pray in the name of Jesus, the one we call Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection shows us the path to the kingdom. And we pray the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've now come to the part of our worship where we give our offerings to God. Here in person, you can place your donation in the narthex, and online there are options to give on our website and on our app. We also recognize that our offerings come in many forms, including our time and our talent. And we invite you to use this time to think of ways that we can give offering to God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, it is through your goodness that we have gifts to share. And we are as we offer our very selves to you. May we find ourselves blessed by what we give, and may we recognize those things that you have so freely given to us. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Go out into the world to bring forth new life. Dream dreams and pursue visions. And speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear them. And may the God who breathed life into creation to give you, be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and your supporter, set your heart ablaze with passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. 